If uh, your home country votes to leave the European Union, all your rights, all your... The, the one thing is that your investment will be safe and your future will be safe, whatever the... Sorry, someone like the French government would respect those laws. They would have to respect those laws. I mean, like... Hello, I am Ms. MP. Welcome to what is on my timeline. In this video, we're going to look at how social media is exposing the reckless nature of politicians. The sad truth is, their actions have consequences, which includes railroading the lives of so many people for fun post-Brexit. So the poster guy for this whole video is Michael Gove, the Member of Parliament in the UK. I have never seen anything like this. What he did is just like unspoken of. It's not only him, of course there are other people, but what he did is something that is is implanted in the interweb and it's going to last forever. And he cannot lie his way out of this because he's it's already there and it's crazy um another thing is he has like a long long um political uh career you know wikipedia did a really good job of composing all of that here a little bit about him he was born in 1967 august 26 in aberdeen um unfortunately he was born in care he was there for like maybe four months um, when he was subsequently um, adopted and raised in Kitty Brewster area of the city. Um, his political life, as you can see here, is quite long. It started in 2005. And Wikipedia just gave uh, an immense, nice, juicy, very, very controversial um, look at his past in politics and I tell you it is a good read I must tell you that I feel like he is an agent of chaos that he is just up to no good and I do not know what his purpose in the political sphere is for um, and no conspiracy theory is like a thing right now everybody have you know their thoughts and ideas but please go read this and tell me you don't get tingling feelings of conspiracy surrounding him anywho let's get on with this video michael gove is by no way or shape the main guy or the fall guy for brexit he is just another cork in the system but the one who is responsible for really making Brexit what it is today is Nigel Farage. And in this interview, he actually said Brexit failed. And it failed because, I guess, of people like him. Let's listen. Actually benefited from Brexit economically, what we could have done. I mean, what Brexit's proved, I'm afraid, is that our politicians are about as useless as the commissioners in Brussels were. We've mismanaged this totally. And if you look at simple things, simple things uh, such as takeovers, such as corporation tax, we are driving business away from our country. Arguably, now we're back in control, we're regulating our own businesses even more than they were okay. as EU members. Brexit has failed. Back. So it is clear they're now throwing each other under the bus. But I just want to show you how cynical and silly people like Michael Gove is when people are just trying to do their job and interview him. In this election, no, you're making a polemical case for a particular viewpoint. No, I'm because, not. I'm asking you for the truth. Because, do you believe in the truth because, in an election campaign, Mr. Gove? Do you believe in telling the truth? Uh, because you have a particular outlook, because you... I don't have a particular outlook. This is scrutiny, Mr. Gove. Tell me this then. 40 new hospitals. Is, is that true or false? Mr. Boris Johnson says 40 yes, new hospitals. Yes, it is. Yes, true. it is. But I think a critical you thing... You think it's true? I think a critical thing, Kieran, is that if you want to have a, a, a proper conversation... 
I don't know if you noticed like how he's like hopping on his feet, just hopping to his toes. It's almost like his reaction to excitement. Like he just loves to feel like he's being challenged and it's like fun for him. This is how they feel about your lives. It's just sickening. I uh, know they'll be 40. If you want to have a proper conversation, then we can have a proper conversation. But um, of course, what you want to do is to mount a polemical case. And of course, that's that's perfectly this is legitimate. It's scrutiny, Mr. Go. We're no, just it's... asking you simple questions about what is true or not so the voters can make up their minds. It's a polemical argument. Can you tell me, tell me this then? You did it's say it's a polemical let's argument, Kieran. No, 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 no. Do you want it's to go a... over Brexit or not? Uh, um, I, I do, but one of the. Now that we get an, an idea of who Michael Gove is, this very sneaky, sneaky, sneaky politician that says things that are not true. Let me go into who it is affecting and then we'll get into the untruth that he said. Um, this man, he's like almost in politics to mess things up and it, it becomes clearer and clearer and just even me, as I said you have to read that Wikipedia description of his political career because this is like a game for him so we're gonna go into this interview that I saw and this is in this is what I saw in my timeline that really made me really do this video um, and yeah it's really really sad there's one thing that makes the retirement dream possible for so many expat pensioners. It's their entitlement to free healthcare in Spain, paid for by the UK under EU-wide reciprocal arrangements. But a few days ago, the UK government announced that in a no deal, that would stop. A safety net would be pulled away. And that was the moment that for a lot of people here, Brexit... ...in isolation. Dave England is not well and he is worried. Well, I've got um, Parkinson's, which was diagnosed a couple of years ago. Uh, I had a heart attack just before Christmas. I've generalised arthritis. And how much is your medication costing? The medication's probably costing around six, seven hundred euros a month. That. So who will pay for Dave's care in a no-deal Brexit? The UK government is advising pensioners to take out private medical insurance. If it comes to a point where private medical insurance is what's needed, where does that leave you? I don't know, I've got, I've got no options there. I haven't slept properly in two years. I wake up sweating, I wake up wondering. And this here is the face of a person that could have been a person who voted to leave. But I was scratching my head, I'm like, well, well, who these people were listening to when they decided to leave the, the, the EU? Who were they listening to? This is who they were listening to. If uh, your home country votes to leave the European Union, all your rights, all your privileges are carried on and are respected. So the one thing I would say to you, and indeed to everyone who enjoys living and who enjoys the prospect of retirement, which I suspect is many years hence, enjoys thinking about retirement, they, the one thing is that your investment will be safe and your future will be safe, whatever the decision on June the 23rd. Sorry, someone like the French government would respect those laws. They would have to respect those laws. I mean, someone like the Spanish PM this, this week has said something completely different about a oh, negative I... impact on British citizens, which seems wholly unfair. I, I, I agree that there are one or two foreign politicians who have tried to play the fear card in this debate. My question is why, though? Why lie to these poor people and this is the reason why many people possibly voted to leave the EU and they voted for a Brexit. I, I just cannot understand how this person with a straight face talks with such um, confidence when he is lying. It is just preposterous. And this has changed my whole view of how I feel about politicians. I've never seen a politician lie and it be captured like this ever, 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 ever. 
And so I think um, the British people should be very, 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 very mad and upset with the people that they have and they have in their their governments and that they have ruling over their laws and um, and regulations. This is scary and I don't know what else to say. But it's perfectly clear, the legal basis is that if you're ordinarily resident and you've got the legal right and title to a property in another European Union country, then that will be respected and you can enjoy your retirement there and I hope have the opportunity to come back and um, uh, uh, see your children um, in this country and they can enjoy sharing a holiday with you. This man is one of the many people that live in Spain and abroad who decided to vote leave and now he's deeply regretting this decision because the dream that he had for his future and his retirement is crushed completely. And I really feel it for him and others, you know, <laughs> because I would say, you know, why do your research? But if the person that you would go to for the information is lying, then your whole democracy is crushed. It's done. It's finished. My plans for me and my wife was to re not retire, but spend winters in Spain. Uh, it's it's a big change because I can still spend the winter in Spain, but it's the amount of money I made to spend to have that, that luxury. Where before, I didn't have to think about that luxury. It was, it was already made for me. Unfortunately, the bubble has burst. This yes, he's correct. It's gone, the bubble has burst, that's it. There's no going back. Unless people like him band together and maybe work on probably reversing Brexit, but it might be too late. Um, the European Union, they're definitely, uh, they're definitely not looking to go back to that um, old school of thought. They are pushing forward and um, yeah, it's like a bit of a, an ego thing. I don't know if they would want to to go back um, or allow the, the, the UK back into the EU. Um, I hope you enjoyed my breakdown of this situation that I found on my timeline. I am a global citizen. I like to know what's going on in the world and I hope you do too as well. And I tried my best um, to bring across this information and to just sum it up all in one because I've been hearing clips here and there from different people that I listen to. And I feel like this is really what I've summed up Brexit to be. Um, please leave a comment, like, subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks again for watching. Have a good one. Bye-bye. So many people now selling up in Spain pensioners who just cannot afford to live there because the insurance alone for me to for me to travel 90 days and back, 90 days and back with my health, it's 2,300 insurance. Wow. On so top of on top of the six thousand you're paying rent.